So this is ancient Arabic numerology, class number three. And I'm just reading the chat really quick. Awesome. So we are going to go over intuitive reading and using different forms of numerology from all over the world, starting in the Middle East and in India, and starting with Arabic and Indian numerology. And we are going to create our own interpretations and start to understand the complexity of numerology through time and use that information to create our own study guides so that we are not, when we read and when we use numerology in our practice and in our craft, and whatever you are choosing to use numerology for, whether that be divinatory work or spell work or magic in general or any form of esoteric practice, whatever you are using it for, you feel much more connected to it and it feels more intuitive to you rather than it being something that you memorized from a teacher or a book or something that you feel as though you have to make up as you go along because the information out there is so vast and complex. And so this class is here to help you break it down and to help you understand it so well that you can create your own intuitive understanding of each number. And so that is what we are doing today. <clears throat> so if you have never looked at the numbers before you are not in class number one or number two please feel free to i'm going to share screens really quick and please feel free to go to the divination website and i'm going to show you It's divinationacademy.com. You will go here and you can, the, <laughs> the Zoom bar is in my way. Here we go. Okay. And you can go to study guides and click on tarot. And if you go to numerology within tarot, you will see the small cliff note definitions of each number. And these definitions are rooted in Arabic numerology, um, as well as numerology from India. But we are also going to explore numerology from different places in the world. And the reason that we're going to do that, even though this class is focused on ancient Arabic numerology, is because ancient Arabic numerology, numerology from Arabic cultures, has affected numerology across the entire world. Numerology started in India and the Middle East, as well as North Africa. And North Africa, India, and the Middle East are what influenced numerology in Greece and Italy and France and Spain. And it also affected more modern numerology throughout South and Central America and as well as East Asia. So the reason that we are going to discuss and talk about different forms of numerology is because Arabic numerology changed and developed numerology across the world. So you can use this as a cliff notes and a study guide as well. It will give you the very, very small cliff note definition of each number when it comes to ancient Arabic numerology. Okay. <laughs> so let's begin. We are going to create our own study guide. And one of the reasons that I'm doing this is that I think if I, because I was going over it, I was writing a huge study guide for all of you that I was going to put on the website. I was going to have numerology be a huge giant section of the study guide. 
area on the website and write out these huge giant study guides for you that gave you big long definitions of each number and i'm still going to do that and that is still there <laughs> it is going to be up in a few days but i don't want to have the same thing happen to you that happened to me when i was first learning numerology from my family and from my mentors that i learned from um when I started using that Arabic numerology to read tarot and read runes and to put it into my spellcraft and into my magic, what ended up happening is I was just reciting the exact same words as all of my mentors and all of the people that I learned from and all of the books that I read and the family members that I talked to. And that didn't help me. <laughs> Sometimes I didn't even really understand what I was saying. Sometimes I would just repeat and recite different forms of knowledge that I had learned from different people, and I didn't even know what I was talking about. So when the person would ask me questions while I was giving them a divinatory reading, I wouldn't have all of the answers because I didn't truly know exactly what I was saying. I was just reciting and repeating what I had learned. And that is not what I want for you. I want you to have that as a resource and a reference because it is very important, but I want you to know what you're talking about. I want you to understand what you're saying, and I want you to understand numerology on a level that makes it intuitive for you, that you're not memorizing anything, but instead you understand the number in such a huge way that you could take one number and use it to describe an entire person an entire situation, an entire point of view, an entire period in life, an entire time period. And numbers are so much more complex than just a few sentences out of a book that explains numerology, even though those are very helpful tools and resources as well. So I will. And I do want to let you know, I know I let you know this a lot, Natalia, but you really, really should. If you haven't already, go watch the tarot classes. They're already up on YouTube. They're already all over the website. Um, I am the tarot teacher. And I promise I already take every single one of these numbers and spend a good two hours describing how they affect every single tarot card. Um, and they're like four hour long videos about them. But also I will discuss and talk about that in this class as well. And I love that you ask about tarot all the time because tarot is my favorite form of divinatory practice. And so I do love that you bring that up all the time. And I love talking about tarot. So yes, I will definitely do that. But also just to let you know, it is already there. So we are going to start with the number one. I want to make this really pretty and fancy, but just for, <laughs> I will make it look super pretty and awesome and colorful and fancy and beautiful afterwards so that we don't take up too much time with that. And instead we take up time with having our awesome discussion. So now I want to, of course, no problem, Natalia. Now I want to bring it into a discussion. If you pull up that page on the website, if you need to, to get the cliff notes of the number one, um, which is right here. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Okay. Which is right here. If you bring up those cliff notes, if you need to, let's have a discussion about the number one. We know that it means the beginning of everything. It is creation, manifestation, it's an idea, a feeling, an action, a reaction, the very, very first steps you take on a physical journey. We know that, and, but, so I'm going to put that in here, beginning of everything. And while I am writing this, I would love, because this is the whole point of this, is for all of you to join in. Now that we have had two classes about the number one, and for some of you, you've been to my tarot classes, and you've been to my runes classes, and you've heard me talk about numerology from an Arabic perspective so many times. 
what does the number one mean to you? And not only that, but can you give me examples of the number one? Real life, real examples. I've come across in the past and quite often the numbers 111 or 1111 on my stove. And uh, I'm learning about them, that they're called angel numbers, the beginnings. Yes, angel numbers. I love that you brought that up. So angel numbers, though, um, they are much more modern than ancient Arabic numerology. And they stemmed from Arabic numerology and started in Italy and Greece. They are still a huge part of numerology. And angel numbers, when we talk about their definition from Greece, took a lot of, they were inspired by. I don't necessarily mean that they appropriated it or took it in any way. Um, they were inspired by the people of Lebanon and the cultures and ideas surrounding numerology from Lebanon. And if you look at the map, Lebanon and Greece are very close to each other. They are just separated by the Mediterranean Sea. And it was very easy for them to communicate and talk and trade. And a lot of Lebanese food, when you go out to eat Lebanese food, um, is very, well, you would say Greek food is very similar to Lebanese food um, because Greek culture was inspired very much by Lebanon, and that includes their numerology. And you get angel numbers in Greece, and something like a 111 would be an angel number for the beginning, and it would be a good omen or good luck for the beginning of a new journey. And there's so much more that goes into that, um, but that is the, the basics of getting 111 or 1111. And it is embracing change, embracing something that's brand new and new ideas and new forms of technology and engineering and embracing the future. And the number one is all about not only just beginning, but it's also about the future and embracing the new and being willing to embrace new things, new people, new ideas. It's new things to come. Yes. One could also be isolation or the feeling of being alone. But kind of like Andrea said with it, with 111 or 1111, it could also be a sign that you're not alone. If there's more than one, one, then there's more than being alone, for lack of a better way of putting that. <laughs> yes, definitely. One is we usually when we begin brand new things and we start brand new journeys and we are doing something that we have never done before. A lot of the time it does feel like we are alone and like we have to do a lot of the work to build the foundation by ourselves because yeah, yeah go ahead um what i've known with these angel numbers is that i'm not alone i'm with the angels are with me at that time Yes, definitely. And like, like Honey said as well, um, the number one can also, if it is paired with another one, <laughs> be this idea of even though you are starting something brand new, you might not know what you're doing. It might be very scary and something that is, um, you have no idea what to expect, but that having multiple ones together has the potential to mean that you are not alone. Definitely. I would definitely say I, I'm, I'm trying really hard to kind of bring that into it. And I really do think that that can be a big aspect of it. 
But I would say that the number three and the number the number three probably would represent a lot more of that not being alone and being with others and community and um, friendship. Um, and then six being kind of the ultimate number of community and being together. And one is a little bit more of a number where you might feel a, a little bit more isolated. Um, but definitely they can all represent this idea because starting something new can always be done with friends and family and people who love you and all of those things. So definitely. Kind of like a uh, student starting out of college, going there, fe feeling alone, feeling isolated, like new place, new people, new everything, but you still have most time a roommate This so and students that you have to see every day, at least you hope you do if you're in class. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so you're still around, so, so you may feel alone, but you're not necessarily alone. If, if you see multiple ones, I mean. Yes. Can you guys see the page that I'm typing on? Yes. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. Sometimes I share screens and move across to different screens and you can't see them anymore. So anyway, thank you. <laughs> and thank you for that example. Exactly. I love that. I wanted to put real life examples. And that is such a fantastic one. And it also shows off the two things that we were just talking about. That college can be very lonely and isolating and scary. You might be leaving your friends, your family, the people you went to high school with. You might be leaving your hometown. But also, you are meeting new people and new professors and new roommates and new friends. And that is a great example of how one can represent both of those things at the same time. And I love that. Yes. I, I think also, too, is like one is yourself. And also, it, it represents the best. Are you there, Alex? Yes. Sorry, I was typing and writing what you said. Yes, I completely agree. <laughs> yes. And understanding. I definitely think that one represents the self and who you are and understanding who you are. And it is really feeling like, like, I love how you said the best, because it is really having, if you are going to have an idea and you're going to turn that idea into a manifestation and a journey and something that you want to work hard on, then you really have to have so much faith in that idea and in yourself and wanting to to try your best to make sure that it happens that you're number one <laughs> yes <laughs> and all that you do <laughs> exactly thank you very much natalia oh and i love we have some examples in the chat awesome mediterranean food is the best agreed the yes like a business or having a baby thank you so much i love that you said that could also be ambition thinking of like the in astrology the first house is commonly represented by self and the first sign is aries it's all about ambition going forward yes Yes. And I love, I'm going to add those. What is your name? I'm so sorry. It only comes up as iPad. So I never know who that is. But what, what is your name? Or sorry, what? it's it's Michelle. Oh, hey, Michelle. Awesome. Don't be sorry. Awesome. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you, Michelle. I love those ideas. Starting a business and having a baby. I'm putting those in right now. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Oh, of course. Thank you. Let's see, having a baby. Also starting a new job in general. Yes. Getting married for the first time. Yes, definitely. 
I like what Morgan had said about uh, being the oldest child. The first is often the ambitious, driven child. Yes. In my, in my case, I'm the only child, so I was the first and the last. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm the first child. I'm the oldest. So that's awesome. I agree, Morgan. Definitely. The one would definitely represent the oldest child. That is a great example. We can. Definitely. Unity. Yes. So I love that you brought that up. So unity would definitely be, and I, okay. So. This is a great example of how the numbers flow together because the exact keywords like that you will even see in textbooks, the textbook keywords for the Arabic meaning of the number two is two things becoming one. And the way that that is interpreted is in many different ways, such as love or decision making it is when they the road breaks off into two separate roads and you have to make a decision and force that road to become one again and it is known as the decision card as well as the love card so the love aspect of marriage the love aspect of two humans or five humans however many people coming together in love is represented both by one and two. Two would be the love and the people coming together and the harmony that that makes and the decision to do that would all be represented by two. But going from being somebody who might not have had, like going from being single, I guess, to being married, would be represented by one because it is a brand new journey. It is a start to a new feeling, to possibly a new house, to possibly a new adventure, to possibly a new state or country or new experience. So all of the new things that you are starting and going through because you're getting married are represented by one. But the actual love and coming together in your marriage is represented by two. Does that make sense? It's like a partnership. Yes. Exactly. And two is a huge number for partnerships and for decision making, which um we're going to go over and talk about when we hit the number two, because in the like cliff notes that I gave you on the website, it does only discuss and talk about the decision making aspect of the number two. And it doesn't go into the love part of number two very much because that's a much more complex, um, it's, it's, it's a much more complex way of looking at the number two. It is much deeper. It's a much deeper understanding of what the number two means, which is the entire point of today's class. So we're going to get there once we get to the number two. Um, I have one more example. Yes. It maybe uh the first chapter or volume of a book. Oh my gosh. It, it's uh like the characters in that are 
in, in different phases of their life through each book or each chapter. So it so it kind of shows that it's not just the beginning of some, in that beginning of life throughout, but the little volumes in between, so to speak. It's the winner. The winner. Yes, definitely. I would put that as like, instead of the winner, it would be like um, pride and What's another word? Because it's instead of actually being, because the one doesn't necessarily represent like being number one. Like if you get a one in your reading, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're the best or that you're the number one. But it does mean that in order to start this new journey, that you need to have a lot of faith and pride in the new decision or new journey that you are starting. For example, you know, like we have our example of going to college having a baby, starting a business, getting married, starting a new job. All of these things require a lot of pride and confidence. Confidence. Yes. <laughs> confidence. <clears throat> Success. Yes. It is the, I wouldn't necessarily say that because if you get a one, I'm just going to like throw it. So if we're talking about divinatory practices, if you get a one, like in tarot or in runes or in a dice reading or in any any form of reading that you can give that would involve numerology, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are starting the right path. It, it doesn't always mean that you are doing the right thing. It doesn't mean that this marriage is a great idea. It does not mean that having a baby is a good idea. It doesn't mean that you are going to be successful at your new job. All it means is that you are starting a new job. <laughs> now, it has the prospect of success because obviously if you are starting this new journey, then you hopefully have, like I said, pride and confidence. You feel as though you are going to be successful because usually when we start new things, we hope that we're going to be successful at them, usually. Sometimes we start college just because our parents forced us to. And that would be another example of the number one. Sometimes the number one is, you know, you started a new thing because your parents made you. Or you got a new job because you had to. Because you had to get a second job because you weren't able to pay your bills. And you have no idea if you're going to be successful at that new job because you already have a second job and you have no idea if you're going to be able to balance these two jobs. So it doesn't always mean that you're going to be great at it um, or that you're going to be successful. But sometimes it does present the hope of success. Does that make sense? And when we really also discuss and talk about the number one, meaning this idea of welcoming the new. And that is really, really difficult and more difficult than when people think than people think it is. Because when we talk, usually when you talk just one on one with someone, usually they are open to the future and to the new things that might present themselves in the future. But a lot of the stereotypes that all of us know of are older generations hating on the younger generations because it is very difficult to accept new ways of thinking, new ways of being, new ways of doing. And it is very difficult for humans to accept change. And one is a huge number of change. It is a brand new path in life. And also it is welcoming new paths <clears throat> that are happening all around you. Welcoming the ideas and the, the ways of thinking of the youth and of the, the, the brand new people 
on this planet, welcoming and being open to all of the new ideas that are being presented to you by the youth and the new generations. And one is a huge representation of welcoming in these brand new concepts from brand new people and from newer generations. It is also being able to look towards the future and welcome in new technology and new ways of doing old things. <clears throat> yes, trying something for the first time. I love that example. Yes, I'm going to put that. <laughs> yes. For the first time. Yes. I already put new ways of thinking. I already said that. <laughs> the start of a new uh, tabletop game campaign. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Having the cur courage is such a fantastic word for the number one. Yes. Yes. The courage to do anything for the first time. I love that. I'm going to put that up here. Hold on. It welcomes new technology and new ways of thinking. What does it mean by a new tabletop game <laughs> campaign? <laughs> um, like, have you ever, have you heard of D&D? Dungeons yes. and Dragons? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it would be like a new Dungeons and Dragons game. <laughs> mm. Yes. A campaign is played over a longer period, whereas like each game that you would play like on a weekly or monthly basis, those are called sessions. But all those sessions build into the full campaign. Of So, so it's like kind of like a chapter versus a whole volume of a book. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, that's all new to me. Um, I'm of the older generation here, so <laughs> I like to understand what it is that's going on. Yes. It is the courage to do any, it is the courage to do, I guess, something <laughs> for the first time. I love the word courage. One would represent courage. Oops. <laughs> I put two twice. Um, one is a huge representation of courage. It takes courage to do absolutely anything for the first time, even if we're just talking about something very simple. And that is something else that, oh, good night, Morgan. I didn't see that you were leaving. Oh, of course. Good night, sweet dreams. So one, yes, it is. Um, so anyway, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> So, uh, one thing that I really want to point out about every number that we have gone through, um, that we are about to go through, is that remember the little things. This is something that I struggled with. I have no idea if you will struggle with it, but just in my experience, I struggled with remembering small things. Whenever I would give readings or even put numbers into my spellcraft, 
I always focused on the huge, gigantic aspects of someone's life or of my life. So I would give a reading and I would talk about one, meaning that they were probably having a baby, starting college, starting a new business, starting a job, buying a new house, buying a new car. That that was the, you know, these things that they were doing. And sometimes, <laughs> actually, most of the time, it was way smaller than I thought. And a lot of times it can just be something like making a new friend, starting a new daily routine, starting a new book. <laughs> we can we can think very small. Um, I'm having a hard time thinking of really small things right now, but they can be very, very small things. We do Going on that first date. Yes, exactly. Definitely. Here, I'm going to put those two. We have going on a first date. <laughs> oh my gosh. And we can put buying a house. Yes, yeah, see, that's a great example of a small thing. Your first drive with a permit. Yes. And yes, exactly, Natalia. Yep, the Ace of Pentacles. Um, the Ace of Pentacles in Arabic numerology, where Minor Arcana in Tarot began, wouldn't necessarily mean a new idea. Remember, in Tarot, we have to pair the number with the suit. And the suit of Pentacles is Earth. And if we were thinking about ideas, ideas would be more represented by swords. Um, so the Ace of Swords would be a new idea, whereas the Ace of Pentacles would be more like a new house, a new pet, a new baby, a new family member. It would be more earthly things. Oh, that's incredible. Or like a new journey. Of course. Yeah, no problem. So what did someone say? Oh, first drive with a permit. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yes. Love it. Awesome. First pet. Yes, or even just getting a new pet. Yes, definitely. Just new pet. And, you know, a new family member, which would also be a pet, but, you know. New family. Yes, definitely. Not necessarily a, just a pet for a new family member. It could also be adopting a kid. Yes, exactly. Exact, definitely. That's why, yeah, a new family member um, could mean so many different things. Exactly. Begin learning a new skill. Oh, yes. Skill or topic. Yeah, I guess. I just the middle. One is the manifestation of just the middle. Mm-hmm. Just the middle, God. These thoughts, and ideas. That makes sense. Hold on. Does that sentence? One is the manifestation of your new thoughts and ideas becoming reality. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Cool. Wonderful. Awesome. So now sorry. that we've finished, <clears throat> oh, that's okay. Don't be sorry. Sorry. Well, um, wouldn't the manifestation of the new thoughts be more like ten or something? Because the manifestation is more of the ending of it, isn't it? 
like it coming to, into essence? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so I love that you brought that up. <laughs> yes. Um, but technically, um, 10, the final part of 10 is just one starting all over again. So, ah. one, yeah, exactly. It all goes in a big circle. Touche. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um so now that we have done this I also forgot so we're gonna back up a little bit I forgot to ask anybody if anybody did the homework so if anybody um was able to create the sigil um and they have anything they would like to talk about the sigil that they created what number that they chose and if creating that sigil and what we were supposed to do, the homework was taking a sigil, creating it, drawing it onto a pot or container, and planting a seed into that plant or into that pot or container. And the that number would grow out of that pot. And this is a spell. We all did a spell together, and we used that sigil or talisman. You can use both of them for the spell that we did and to take that place it on a pot plant the seed and watch the energy of that number grow into your life was anybody able to do the homework and how did it go i've yet to do it so because i hadn't taken the class oh that's okay if you would like to do it, though, I'll talk about it at the end of this class, too, so that you can do it if you would like to. Okay. I drew out the sigil, but I did not plan it because I don't have any seeds on hand, and I got sick all this past week, so I couldn't oh. go out and get anything. I'm so sorry. Ugh, being sick is the worst. I know I keep getting sick, too, and it's it's terrible. It's that time of year, man. Yeah. Thanks. And I, I, I feel for you. I see where you, when you say you get sick, I, oh, I feel for you. <laughs> I know working with kids, I swear I get sick like once a week. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I was wondering if it's possible, like if I have a plant already growing and I just marked on the pot, the sigil, um, I have to know how to do this to make a sigil. Would that be suffice? Yes, definitely. I would say that um, it would probably have a different outcome than planting a new seed. Um, but yes, that definitely works. The growth of the plant and the new growth of the plant will bring the energy of that number into your life. So yes, that works as well. It's just going to be a different outcome than planting a new seed because that plant is already going to have all of the beautiful energy that it has already accumulated through its life in it. So that definitely works as well. I had purchased something online and they sent me some witch seeds. So, um, Oh, that's perfect. What I did was I put one of the seeds in the, the planters, the two planters I have. And so I don't know what's going to come about it, but Anyways, I did it. <laughs> oh, that is so perfect. Yes. Um, at the end of the class, we will have the exact same homework assignment um, because it looks like everybody is still working on this one, which is great. And so, yes, I'll tell you how to do it. And putting it on an existing plant works just as well. And it looks like that's something Honey could do as well. So that's awesome. Good. Perfect. So <clears throat> now that we have gone over the number one, does anybody have any final comments to make about the number one before we move on to the number two? And remember, we are creating your study guide. I'm going to design it up a little bit so that it's easier to understand and prettier and has a little bit more information in it. But this is for you. So is there anything else that you would like on your study guide about the number one? Oh. 
Um, I don't know if it was actually correct or not, but uh, don't have uh, is isolation or loneliness on there. I don't know if that would be. Oh, you know, actually, yes. You know what? Let's add that. Oops. One can be very nice. One can be very isolating and lonely. It might lead to letting go of old relationships and bringing in new ones. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> awesome. I love that. We, yes, yes, <laughs> definitely. One is a symbol for independence. <laughs> and leadership definitely yes have you ever heard of the song one is the loneliest number you'll ever have yes <laughs> definitely that's where i got the idea <laughs> yeah, that's good that's good i love that yep little off topic but i still remember that uh fresh prince of bel-air episode when carlton was sitting in jail from something I don't remember what, and he was saying that on a harmonica, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I haven't really seen that show. I definitely used to, like, when I was a little kid, it used to, like, come on randomly while I was watching my cartoons. <laughs> and that's about it. That's all. That's all I remember. <laughs> what show is this? The uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air with Will Smith. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember that. That was back in the 80s, I think. Sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It was a hilarious show. <laughs> it was. They did like a reboot, not a reboot of it, but they would show reruns of it on like Nick at Night when I was a little kid. And <laughs> that's where I saw it. Yep, Nick at Night. Dealing with a disability or learning about one. Definitely. Especially, I would say that, um, which it usually is. <laughs> but having that be a new experience for you. So I would say that it probably would be a little bit more of, I can't really, hmm. A disability could be represented by many different numbers. One would definitely represent a little bit more of having a disability that is new for you. So having not necessarily being born with it, um, having it be something that either you have a child that has a disability and having to learn and gain more knowledge about that disability, that would definitely be represented by the number one. Um, but then you having a disability um, would be represented by the number one if this was a new thing that you had to deal with, um, whether that be just as time went on and it was a disability that happened after you got older or it was a disability that happened due to an accident or getting hurt or things like that. Um, but definitely, yes. Um, here, we can put that in the examples. It would be... How do I put if, this? If I may, um, learning how to live with a new disability or someone or a, learn how to, for lack of a better way, deal with someone new, like a baby with a disability, perhaps? Yeah, or or being being a caretaker or um, being a new a new caretaker for someone with a disability. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much for that. I Yes, that is a fantastic example. Okay. 
wonderful. This is already so much better <laughs> than the cliff notes that are available to you on the website. So this is fantastic. And I thought it would be good to create it together. <clears throat> I know I already gave my spiel for why, but I think this is fantastic. And also, as someone who has been studying numerology her entire life, this also helps me because hearing it's always fantastic to hear new perspectives on something that you have been learning your entire life. Because even today, all of you said something that I have never even thought of as an example before for the number one, which is perfect and amazing because even I get to, to learn is, things from a new perspective. Sorry. Oh no, go, go ahead. ahead. Um, this, what we're doing now is more sort of like in today's times. Yes, definitely. This is um, a modern take on numerology, but using the most ancient form of numerology, which I really do enjoy that we're kind of mixing the two. Because yes, there are many examples that we could put on here that would have been examples a long time ago. And because all of us obviously live in 2024, uh, we are coming up with ideas and examples and ways of thinking that would be more towards 2024. But the wonderful thing about numerology specifically, and this is not true about all forms of magic and divination and mysticism, um, but numerology was built around the idea of growth and change, especially if we're talking about North African numerology and numerology from the Middle East, ancient Arabic numerology and numerology from India. When you read books from scholars who were writing about Arabic numerology 2,000 years ago. They discussed how it changes with new generations of people, that new generations of people have the exact same foundation where one means the beginning of everything. One means the beginning of a new journey, of a new idea, of a new feeling, of a new emotion, of a new action. Um, but that obviously those new emotions, ideas, and journeys are going to be different hundreds of years into the future. And they already, in ancient Arabic texts from 2,000 years ago, were already saying that that would be a thing and that that would happen. Which is really, really cool because they don't necessarily do that when you read texts from um, either about numerology from Greece or Italy and when we talk about different divinatory tools, such as runes, they did not do that. When you read about runes, for example, certain runes will represent things like cattle. And whereas now we kind of have to create interpretations around that and what cattle represented for the ancient Norse people. But the ancient Norse people did not put into their records that this would be something that changed and morphed with time and generations over thousands of years. They just put that it represented cattle. <laughs> and so, which is fantastic too. That's also awesome and a beautiful representation of their culture. But it is very cool that Arabic numerology left room for this to be around for thousands and thousands of years, which I do appreciate. <laughs> um, For my... I'm looking through the chat now. And so um, my D10 dice, <clears throat> I go to either like little local shops online because I recently I started liking shopping online more, but I don't want to buy things from Amazon because I don't want to give all of my money to Jeffrey Bezos. So I try to shop at um, little privately owned businesses that I find online or I have this place that I go to that's local to Colorado. It's called Enchanted Grounds and they sell like D and D stuff and tabletop gaming stuff and RPG stuff. And I buy my dice there, <clears throat> but I suggest finding Etsy shops. They have the coolest dice on Etsy or just finding little privately owned shops. You can even find like, um, little private businesses through TikTok, through YouTube, through different social media platforms, through Facebook, People will advertise their small business, and a lot of people make dice. So, yeah, that's what I suggest. 
Oh, I didn't even read that you said Amazon before I said that, honey. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Amazon is also totally fine. <laughs> they, I give my money to Jeffrey Bezos more than I should. <laughs> but um, if you're looking for other options other than Amazon, then you can also look up small businesses online, too. <laughs> oh, Timu. Cool. Yes, you could definitely do it from Timu. But I, I haven't. I haven't looked on there either, so I wouldn't know. But yeah, that's a great idea. And yeah, local game or comic book shops are my favorite to go to. That's That would be like my top suggestion if you have those in your area is to go to local game shops or comic book shops. <laughs> so yeah, everything Honey said, <laughs> plus checking social media. <laughs> so anyway. Moving on to the number two. <laughs> so the number two, once again, if you would like to go check your cliff notes, you can on the website. And you can see right here, you know, number two, like I said before, we're going to go really deep into number two now. And number two is the representation of two things coming together to make one. And in a lot of people's interpretations, especially thousands of years ago in the Middle East and in North Africa, that interpretation, the interpretation of two things coming together to make one was a decision and love. Those were the two interpretations. But like I told you, there are many, many, many interpretations of two things coming together to make one. I would keep in mind that the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Arabic people came up with the interpretation of a decision and love, but that doesn't mean that that has to be the only interpretation. So let's go over what <clears throat> two is, let's say the number two is, <laughs> two, two people, things, no. Two people. Hmm. Things. Or. We'll use objects. Objects. Two people. Objects. Situations. Coming. Back together to make one. Ideas. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Love, yes. Two people, objects, ideas, or situations coming together to make one. Love it. Yes. Marriage. Yes. So that's why I said exactly that marriage can be represented by one or two. Because, just like Andrea said, marriage is a very, very obvious when I say what the number two means but it was also very obvious for the number one with everything we talked about so yes marriage two ones make a two yes they do oh, oh geez alex i a g e oh my gosh okay <clears throat> exactly two ones make a two exact and that is exactly how I, I want you to realize, too, as we go through these, how the numbers flow together. How one, obviously, if you have started a new journey, you are going to come to a time where you have to make a decision, where a fork in the road appears and two paths split off. And you have to take those two paths and put them back together to create one. And as well as during your journey, when you start, like we already said, you are probably going to create relationships. You are probably going to make friends. You are probably going to have many instances where two things come together to make one. Alchemy. <gasps> yes. Oh, I love that answer so much. <laughs> Marceline, honey, I need you to get down. I love you. Okay. 
Yes. Alchemy. Um, since I just heard there's a kid here, um, what it takes to make one of them. Yes. You know, that, that thing starts with an S. <laughs> yep. You know what? We're just gonna, mm-hmm. Sex. Yep. Sex and in. Because there are many ways for sex to happen. <laughs> so we will put sex and intimacy. <laughs> but yes, that is brilliant. That's a great one. Oh. Oh, that's what I did that made it look weird. I put spaces sometimes. That's why it looks funny. Okay. I have to fix that. Okay. Anyway. Cooking. Cooking. Yes. Which is also alchemy. Yes. Brilliant. I love that. Yes. The sun and the rain. Ooh, I love that. So by the sun and the rain, do you mean that like two can represent dichotomy or that it like represents the sun itself and rain itself? Because I could see both. So I'm just asking. <laughs> I was just thinking about there's a sun and there's a rain and that's what the weather is like yes so like the the two differences between sunny and rainy or like having a sunny day or a cloudy day crossroads yes crossroads definitely crossroads and I would put as well, just like you said, like the difference between the sun and the rain, I would put, yeah, like dichotomy. Definitely. Duality. And duality. I was wondering if someone was going, like, yes, and duality. Yes. Yin and yang. Would that be represented yep. by duality or would that be a different thing? Honestly, I could see both. So I'm going to put it down because I could see it being a different thing and also represented by duality. So I can put... That as well. Yes. Becoming comfortable with your journey. Yes, definitely. I love that. You know what? I'm going to put that as an example. I was thinking about adding that to the paragraph instead, but I think. Definitely. I love that. The human body being made of uh, flesh and blood. Yes, the human body. Definitely, definitely, for sure. Oh, I love these. Yes. <laughs> a decision is a decision, but would um, choosing to stay, like take a job, for example, choosing to stay at the position you're in versus taking a promotion would definitely it would definitely represent that how would i put that into an example because yes i it would definitely represent that would that be like um career decisions that would be almost like any decision you have to make and i think that was mentioned in your uh blurb that you had for number two but it is definitely so turning that into a situation and like an actual physical thing, I would say that like career choices or career decisions. Does that work for your example? Yeah. Okay. Career or choices within your career. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A trip decision. Yes. Like, where you want to go, like for a holiday. Yeah. Let's see. You have decisions about traveling, vacation. Oh my gosh. Okay. 
and holiday. Holidays. <laughs> yes. And vacations. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Heads or tails? Yes. Heads. You know what? Here, I'm going to put like heads or tails um, slash. Oh, my gosh. What is the um, academic word for that? Hold on. It starts with a P. I will remember it in just a second, but we can move on. <laughs> Heads or tails and... Um, flipping a coin? Yeah, flipping a coin is a... Um, there's like an academic term for what flipping a coin can represent within mathematics. And it's a great representation of the number two. Um, it wouldn't be Pythagoras, was it? Probability. That's it. You got yes. it. <laughs> yes. 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 There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, I shouldn't put and if I already put a slash. <laughs> there we go. Would you put the number two and, and the descriptions on a separate page so it doesn't get cut off? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I could probably also change the font to from like 11 to 13. Make it bigger? It, yeah. That's a good idea. I like that. If it helps, you can hit control A and it'll highlight all of the text. Oh, thank you. Cut. With how long I've been writing term papers and I didn't know that. <laughs> thank you so much. Awesome. So now we are going to discuss and talk about, first, I want your answer. So now that I've already told you, that two is the number of love. You already said marriage, so you already got it. Like, I know you already know. <laughs> but why else do you think that two would represent love? And why is it the love card in tarot? Because it's two people coming together. Yes. Definitely. Two people coming together to make one. And one is represented by the relationship that they create together. And it is also represented by the... Not sacrifice is the wrong word, but a relationship requires work from both people. A partnership. Yes. A relationship requires partnership. It requires making sure that you are there for the other person. And sometimes when creating a beautiful partnership, that does mean that there are certain, with lack of a better word, certain sacrifices that you make. They don't feel like sacrifices, you know, because you're in love, but sometimes they do. <laughs> and sometimes a partnership, a relationship, and, you know, a bond between two people requires time and arguments and working things out and learning about the other person and being able to sit and work out different arguments and be able to accommodate for the other person and just so many different things that are all represented by the number two. Compromise. Compromise. Yes. <laughs> Compromise. 
is such a lovely example. <laughs> Oh, how did it go back to, okay. <laughs> With the uh, section on marriage, can you also put common law? Because that's most people are nowadays in common yes, law. Yes, definitely. Also hand fasting. Yes. Of course. <laughs> Yes. Could two also be representative of anxiety, like to because of having to make decisions and stuff? Yes. Oh, definitely. So much so, yes. <laughs> yes. Um let's see. Not, not to backtrack, but could one also be depression since, you know, one, isolation, loneliness, depression? Yes. Yep. Why did... <laughs> the computer apparently hates me today. There we go. But yes, definitely. Depression, for sure. And that was another thing that I was going to mention as well, which you guys already seem to be doing. <laughs> Funny how I... I said it represented love, and all of a sudden we are thinking about all the negative things that it could represent. <laughs> but yes, um, I was also going to mention that remember not to only think about the positives. What, ne not necessarily negatives, but we also, we have points in our lives that are sad, points in our lives that are happy. We have to think about the spectrum of emotions. And we came up with a lot of wonderful things for the number one. But also thinking about the depression and the isolation and the sadness and things like that is something else that we have to think about when talking about the numbers because they represent every single aspect of the meaning behind them. So it is starting something new with the number one. And that has wonderful, beautiful, incredible feelings and things that happen. And it also can be filled with depression, filled with anxiety, filled with arguments. Anger. Wait, what? Arguments. Yes. Arguments. Yeah, that between two people. Yep. Definitely. Arguments for sure. Also with one, um, you said that like 10 is uh it's also one because it's starting over what about death could one represent death start yes. starting over after a loved one dies yes oh brilliant uh-huh Definitely. Divorce? Ooh, yes. But would that be one or two? Because I could see both. I could see both. That's what I was just going to say. I was going to say, for which one? <laughs> because I could see both. Because divorce can be the start of a new journey for you. And it can also be a partnership that you have to have forever because divorce in many ways does not mean the end divorce a lot of times can mean having to continue a different form of communication whether that be for the children or for different <clears throat> whatever reason it is sometimes divorce does not mean the end it just means a different kind of partnership so, I could see it being both. So, yeah, you're going from two to one. Yep. <laughs> we could put that down on both. We put marriage down on both. And it makes sense for both.
ending of a contract. Ooh, yes. Trying to think ending or beginning of a contract too actually yes for 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 one or for two because now i can see both <laughs> so which one were you putting that under andrea two two got it <laughs> agreed because it takes at least two to make a contract it does yep Eh, we'll put or instead of and. I feel like this could be like part of the duality thing, but um, night and day. Yes, yes, so much yes. And even though that is a part of duality, I think it's definitely at worth putting on here. As Hot it's and cold? Yes, <laughs> yes. All of the different kinds of duality. Yes. <laughs> We're bouncing off of each other's ideas here. I love it. Me too. I love it. That's what was supposed to happen. So I'm so happy that it did. <laughs> what about walking in someone else's shoes? You know, seeing a other person's point of view. Yes. Oh, empathy. Yes. Wet and dry. Yes. We're just going to put instead a partnership. Ah, I cannot type today. There we go. How about white and black? Yes. Definitely. Or like dark and light. That works. Yeah. Round and square. Ooh, yes. <laughs> it would be like, because we could count all of them. So like round or like circular or cornered. Does that make sense? Or like circular or... Mm, I still think about uh, square and round. Like you, when you you're trying to put a round, a square peg in a round hole, type of thing, right? Yes, totally. No, that makes sense. Yeah, round and square. Soft and hard. Yes, yeah, soft and hard. <laughs> I love it. Sword versus pen. Ooh. That's a cool way of thinking about duality. Sword and pen. E. No I. Thank you. Oh, mm -hmm. sword and pen. That too. Yes. Um, it is the duality within the universe and within ourselves to is a partnership and a relationship. It is the love and empathy that we have for one another. Yes. Yep. The fork in the road, a decision. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then I, as, oh, go ahead. I don't know if this is relevant today or not, but I know that when I was growing up, there was only male and female. Now it's whatever. <laughs> I would say that we could add... Um, Masculine and feminine, maybe? Yeah, that's I was going to try and say, but it would be the masculine and feminine energies within the universe. That sounds nice. Oh my gosh, Alex, you can type. And what about scales? Oh, all sure. of the energy in between. <laughs> because there's a lot more than masculine and feminine energy. But yes, go ahead. What did you say, honey? I was going to say like uh, scales or uh, um, spectrums. <gasps> they, they, there's a lot in between, but they're mainly the two ends is what is shown. Yes. Spectrums and scales. Yes, I love that. Totally. And a lot of things can fall under that, which, yeah, just like a lot of things fall under duality. Exactly. What exactly is spectrums? So like the spectrum of gender um, and the, um, any anything really could be a spectrum the this uh, the spectrum of learning the spectrum of it's you know like a bell curve and how there are like um hmm. alex may i try yes please go ahead okay um have you ever been in like a hardware store and on the light aisle a lot of times especially they used to have them where it shows like different watt light bulbs from like um cool blue to warm yellowish that would be considered a spectrum so yeah. it's just basically a range a range, yeah, a range. A range. Okay. yeah okay. that's what i was trying to get at with the bell graph exactly yeah. Yeah. and like the spectrum of color which is a great example i love that yeah Okay. True and false. Ah. I love that. We could even go true slash false. And we can also say like fact and fic or fact versus fiction. History versus myth. Yes. Grant a lot of times both of those are actually the same. Yep. Yes, they are. <laughs> but that is the same, too, with duality as well. So <laughs> it depends on how deep and philosophical you get with duality. But at one point, if you get deep enough into duality, it there is no difference between the two. For example, when you have, you know, good and bad, which is also something we haven't put on here yet. <laughs> but when you have good versus bad, you need good for bad to exist. And you need bad for good to exist. Therefore, if you get deep enough into it philosophically, there is not a huge difference between would, good and bad. Would that be good versus evil? Yes, good versus evil. Yeah, exactly. Which you can totally put on here. <laughs> Even though, in my opinion, I don't truly believe in good versus evil. Um, but it is a form of duality. It's also a spectrum. <laughs> so I think it definitely belongs on the list. <laughs> ah, did you mean shadow work, Michelle? Because, yeah, totally. 
so sorry. Yes. yes. Autocorrect. <laughs> I, I totally understand. And yes, definitely shadow work for sure. Could it also represent, could two also represent yourself as in like the different facets of yourself? Yes. Yes, definitely. Self and the different, I liked that. I don't know if I, yep, thought so. Okay. Oh. I was thinking of self versus your mirror, which is a reflection of yourself. Ooh, yes, reflection. Reflection. I think we could just leave it at reflection because, yes, definitely, like the mirrored world, the reflection of yourself, the reflection of the world, the reflection of others. Yes, definitely. All of that, for sure. Twins. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Twins. And see, this is going to help so much because I noticed when we were reading and when we were practicing with reading, whether it be with dice, whether it be with tarot or any of the other ways that we have used numerology in all of my different classes, um, that we all kind of said very similar things and the same thing um, whenever you guys were giving readings to each other. And this, I think, is such a fantastic list that you can pull from to realize that you could say so many things in a reading where they pull the number two. <laughs> and I think it was a really big challenge last time when I had people give readings using numerology in a few of my classes and um, asking them to use the number to define an entire person's personality. And that was quite the challenge. And I think that these examples will really help with that because it's easy to see now that we've laid all the examples out on paper, it's easy to see how you could create an entire person's personality strictly and only based off one number. Contradictions? Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> Oops. I forgot the end. Let's see if it'll just thank you. Yep. <laughs> awesome. And I think that paragraph pretty much says it all. I was trying to add more, but I think that that's pretty concise and pretty much covers the number two. The next thing that we're going to do after this class is um, later in, in the next class, or I think the next class we're actually going to focus on more hands-on and actually doing a spell, like spell work and magic with numerology, but we are going to add to this study guide and put the imbalanced and balanced meanings behind each number as well, which is an aspect of this. So we are going to be adding a lot to the study guide as time goes on. But let's do the number three, and then we will discuss and talk about the homework. Wow, I did not even realize two hours had already passed. That went by really fast, which is good. At least it did for me. I was having fun. <laughs> okay. Cool. So we have the number one, the number two. I want to make sure that it's formatted the same. Okay. Could, could we do number three next time because of time? Sure. We can start talking about the homework now. Yeah. Oh, okay. That would be great. No because problem. Of... Thank you. So will we continue on in classes building the um, study guide? Yes. Yay. I know. This is fun. <laughs> oh, good. I think so, too. I'm so glad. <laughs> okay so I'm going eh we're gonna we can stop sharing okay also real quick um it may help you can put 
tables into Google Docs and that now you can have two rows of all the examples. So they may all fit on one page, depending on how they're uh, put together. Oh, that's true. I put a lot of tables into Google Docs, so we could definitely do it that way. That's a really good idea. It would look a lot more um, organized and put together. I like that. Good idea. I'll put it into a table. Would you Thank sort you. of like highlight half of it and then put it in a separate column? Is that what you mean? Um, You can create like, like an actual like table. Um, and then put the examples into the table so I could have one side have the paragraph and then the other side have all the examples so that it would all fit onto like one page. Oh, okay. That's great. Yeah. I think that would be good. And then each number can have its own page depending on how big the table is and how much it takes up. That's a great idea. Thank you, honey. Um, so for the homework, so it is going to be the same homework as last time. Um, and please come to class next time with it. And we are going to pull up the whiteboard so that I can explain how this is going to work. So you can use a plant that you already have. I think that's a fantastic idea, especially so that not everybody has to go out and buy something because I really like not forcing people to buy things. But for this particular one, we did require a plant. So you can definitely go out and buy one. You can also, there are many, many plants around if you are in the type of neighborhood that has plants growing around that you are able to clip and put in water and regrow. So if you want to Google the different plants in your areas and which one has the capability to be clipped and replanted, you can always do it that way as well. If you just want to walk around your neighborhood, like for instance, my neighborhood has a ton of lilac bushes and lilacs mm -hmm. are one of those plants that you can clip and regrow and they will grow. If you just put them in water for a while, their roots will grow and you can put them in dirt and the lilac plant will grow and i didn't lots. know that and lilacs are my favorite plant oh really i oh. i love lilacs they're one of my oh, too beautiful and they smell so nice and uh yeah for me i can't go out and get plants because i'm in a wheelchair so i can't do it yeah which i got my two favorite plants here now Oh, perfect. So yes, take an existing plant or a plant that you find outside, or if you have the ability to go buy a pack of seeds or purchase a pack of seeds online, there are some places where you can get free packs of seeds. I posted one to the Facebook page for divination earlier, where if you send your, um, you just send a letter in to the specific address, they'll send you a bunch of milkweed seeds, which are the only food that monarch butterflies eat. And so you'll get a whole bunch of monarch butterflies in your yard if you plant the milkweed. Nice. Yeah. So somehow acquire a plant <laughs> or a seed and acquire a container for which to put the plant or the seed in. After you have done that, you are going to, or before, whenever you want, you are going to create your sigil or your talisman. It can go by many names. And this particular type of sigil that we are creating, all you will do is take the meaning of the number, hold it in your mind, and draw a very simple picture or symbol. And one of the ways that you can do this, if you would like to, this is just an example, is you can take the number itself. So if you were planning on using the number four, you could use the number four itself or any version of the number four. Oh, I hate that one, actually. I'm bad at, uh, you know, whatever. No. <laughs> whatever that cool four looks like, that kind of looks like that, but that's way wrong. <laughs> but, you know, you can draw the number four and add symbols to it. So for me, if you were, you know, 
you could draw the number four and you can add an infinity symbol to the number four, which kind of looks like an eight, but you know, you could add the infinity symbol. You could add a spiral. You can add horns. You could add lines. And create whatever type of symbol that you would like to create out of your number. And that is just one way of doing it. You can create your talisman however you would want. Just hold the meaning of the number in your mind and draw a symbol. It can even be a picture. Some people for the number four picture a very sturdy table and you can draw a table or a house. Some people for the number five, they imagine fire. You can draw fire. Anything that represents the number for you and that is an easy enough symbol that you could draw it yourself and put it on to the pot of the plant. So after you have created your symbol and your, you know, your sigil, your talisman, um, then you will take that and put it on to the pot of the plant or the seed and watch it grow. And the energy from that number will come into your life. And in the previous class, we talked about a spell that you can also do to help to pull the energy from this number. And it involved casting a circle and meditating on that number. And if you would like to do that, you can go to the website. Um, personally, here, I'm going to share screens again. Personally, I have a um, section for you on how to build an altar and how to cast a circle. But I think Kelsey does as well. I think that there are two sections on there. I would have to look again and see if Kelsey has one too. Um, but if you would like to bring more energy from this number in, and you would like to make this spell a little bit more complex, you can go to study guides. You can go to circle casting. And it will give you how to cast a circle and how to build an altar right here and you can click on those and it'll give you a very basic description on how to cast your circle and it'll give you you can go here it'll give you very basic steps for calling in the directions and casting your circle and this is just a very 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 basic circle you can add to it the reason i made it so basic like that is so that you can add your own ways to cast a circle because that is um a specifically that one is pulled from a Wiccan circle, um, but there are millions and millions of different ways to cast a circle, and you do not have to use the Wiccan way. It just so happens to be the first one that I put on the website. I plan on putting many more. And then this one is a very, very basic Celtic altar, and this one comes from uh, Celtic paganism and how to build a Celtic pagan altar. Um, but there are many, many ways to build an altar. So if you already know how, please feel free to do it your own way. But you can take an altar, place it in the middle of your circle, cast a circle, take the plant and place it in the middle of the circle with your altar and meditate on the number and all of the things that you would like to bring into your life using the energy from this number and everything that this number represents. And... That will help the energy of the plant and the energy within the number and the energy that you specifically are trying to manifest in your life. And it'll help give the spell that you are doing with your sigil and your plant more intention. Is there a verbiage about the spell? There is not. So you... Okay. Um, as you're meditating, you can create your own incantations to help bring the energy of this number in. Mm -hmm. um, but there is not one that I created for you. But you are welcome to create your own. And the screen before this one is under which uh, section? Oh, it is under circle casting. 
study yeah. guide first. Oh, yes. And study guide circle. and then circle. I, okay, gotcha. Okay, good. And then I think, let me see if there's one that Kelsey, I think Kelsey, this is Kelsey's section. Aha. Uh -huh. So Kelsey also has um, altars as well for creating an altar. And um, yeah, so you can also use Kelsey's one for altar creation as well. yes so i am going to stop the share and stop the recording